if, say, perchance the fall has to get, uh, you know, set back to maybe have to push back to an October, November, even next year start, what do you feel like would be a proficient amount of time for you guys to prepare uh, going into a season, even if the, if the school might be closed down in the summer? How do you feel that you would go across that? Yeah, I, I had a conversation with, with uh, Gene about that uh, the other day, assuming we would start on time, and, and I don't know if that's an accurate deal. If we were in by July 13th, I think we could start practice on August 1st. You know, now take that back however you'd want to take it if we end up starting the end of September. Uh, that's a challenge uh, for everybody and for our players is not knowing um, when that would be. You know, we may get a call and, and have a week before we come in or two weeks from a quarantine standpoint. But we have so many guys on our, on our staff that have such great experience. You know, I talked to Tui and, and Buddy. Uh, and, and Van about this, when we played college ball from late 80s to, to around 90, everybody did stuff on their own in the summer anyway, and you better come in on August 1st and, and be ready to go. Now you had two days and sometimes three days to get yourself in shape, but, um, you know, everybody was challenged. And so, uh, that's what we've kind of mentioned our guys is just be ready when that time comes. Chris, do you think it'll be feasible at all for teams to start practicing before – general students are allowed back on campus? Yeah, I do. Uh, I think it probably is going to have to be that way. Um, and, and we may play in front of an empty stadium. I know that that doesn't want – nobody wants to have that happen. Uh, but, um, you know, if, if we are allowed to bring, I don't know, groups of 50 or less back, we could at least get a weight workout in and roll them in in, in groups. Um, and, uh, you know, based on all the testing and those things and those things that, that are not my area of expertise, um, we are very hopeful that um, we're able at some point being able to bring our players back and probably uh, before the general students can come back. Can you imagine playing two seasons in some form or fashion in a calendar year? Um, you know, you're, you're exactly right. It, I, we've played so much football and I've been involved in so much football over – over the last decade that uh, I don't fear that. Mm -hmm. um, I want to play football and I know the guys do too. We'd love to have a traditional calendar season and we still are hopeful for a traditional calendar season. If we don't have a traditional calendar season, uh, it will be, it will stress those guys and it will stress the depth on teams. But uh, I believe if we end up having to play that non-traditional season, you're going to see a lot of players play, um, in that first half, so to speak, yeah. uh, see what they have for the next year. Cause you're going to utilize it for the fall of 2021 in, in essence. And I, I would just fear that as far as if a kid gets an ACL in February in game three, he's essentially missing two full seasons. Why you think it's important to have a football season this year? Well, it's kind of the fabric of our society. I, I would hate to imagine going through a fall and not driving by a high school stadium or, or having my son who's going to be a junior at Manhattan High getting ready for a high school practice and high school season because uh, that, that, is, that is so much fun. And those kids, they don't know how many years they're playing in, 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 as a young player. And so I think it's so important for those guys to have that ability to compete and be on a team uh, from a younger, younger player's perspective. You know, when you look at the college and the, and the NFL, um, our, our world needs sports. They, they need every sport and uh, football brings everybody together. Now that may be unique this year if it does bring everybody together, but in the same respect, we have to find a way to play it. Uh, I think financially as much as anything, uh, because it, it will help every other sport and it'll help us and help our university uh, from the revenue standpoint. Uh, and I just know this when my last game I played, I was a, a senior, and man, I cried my eyes out when I fin finished up playing. I knew I wasn't playing at the next level, and I see all these seniors that we have that have aspirations, and maybe they will get a chance to play at the next level, to have things taken away uh, and maybe not play full 12 games or uh, whatever that may be, and all of a sudden they get it cut short. Uh, it's, it's a game that's only played for so long, and you only get so many opportunities every year. You only typically play 12 in 365 days. That's – uh, that's a tough pill to swallow if we can't have it. Is there a position group you feel like is most affected or least affected by not having spring ball for you guys? 
Yeah, without question, the offensive line, just because we had so many new guys there uh, and, and they're a close, close knit group of guys. And, and uh, I know that, uh, you know, I, I look at Noah Johnson and uh, Josh Rivas of uh, two guys that are older, that are leaders, that, are, that Josh has played some and Noah's just a tremendous leader of trying to connect all those guys together so that they're around each other more. Because uh, that's, you know, whether it's on a Zoom, just the offensive lineman watching something without Coach Riley, uh, you have to build cohesion there on, on that offensive line. And, and uh, uh, that's probably the biggest area. I'm hearing stories about Kansas State football players using milk jugs uh, to lift weights with and PVC pipe and things like that. What can you say just about the strides of, of your kids to want to be able to work out, to want to be able to do do the right thing during this time when there's so much uncertainty out there? What kind of reports are you hearing about how they've been able to maintain as far as their conditioning goes? Hey, Scott, we're, we're all as coaches doing the same thing, using whatever we can to get a workout in, too, because we don't have that access. But I, I credit uh, Chris Dawson and our staff uh, of reaching out to these guys uh, each week and finding out what they have and then designing a plan around that. Some guys are fortunate enough to have some weights. Some guys just have some bands. Some guys, to your point, maybe are doing it unconventionally with milk jugs or or cement blocks, whatever it may be. And, and that's where, you know, I think Chris Dawson is as good as there is uh, in the country uh, of, of modifying whatever workout it, it is for a young man. And then from a running standpoint, everybody has the ability to run. And there's, there's in my mind, there's not an excuse to not have be in really good cardio shape because uh, that's something that everybody has the ability to do. I don't want to make you single out any player. I'm sure tons of guys have been great in this time, but have there been any new players uh, or different names than you would have expected that have kind of stepped up and shown you leadership in this unique circumstance? A, a guy that probably just doesn't get mentioned a whole lot uh, is Brock Monty. I think Brock does a, a phenomenal job of, of leading and, and setting things out there and, and calling teammates. And uh, probably Noah Johnson would be the other one. You know, the, the Wyatts and Skylers are always doing that and Joaquin and stuff, but to probably Noah and, um, and Brock. How much do you have to prepare to, I guess, maybe dumb things down, for lack of a better word, on offense and defense with what you're trying to install, just knowing that you, you won't have as much time and you won't have the spring? Yeah, we've talked about that extensively on both sides of the ball. Uh, you know, to mix question, I think having a quarterback back allows you to probably be uh, a little more complex. Um, but how much can the O-line handle? I just think having Skyler back with the communication that he has with a lot of wide receivers and tight ends that will be available that have played will help us. Uh, I've talked to Coach Klanderman. We're, we're not changing wholesale on defense. We are tweaking some things that Joe just feels more comfortable with. Um, but the kids wouldn't know it. The general fan wouldn't know it. We'll still look the same. Uh, but we have talked to those guys, you know, where – whether it's a new seat, you know, where, where Denzel was at or uh, a new somebody on the defensive line, we have to make sure that uh, our guys can, can play fast. And so probably defensively will be a little bit simpler to start.